to that, to that tree and then he will be silent for some time. You know, he's trying to keep his promises. And then he will say, My Rabb, uh, O son of Adam, Allah Azza wa will tell him, O son of Adam, did you not promise me that you would not keep asking to be moved? Uh, he will say, yes, my Rabb, I will not ask you for anything more. His Rabb may be glorified, will excuse him because he's seen something which he has no patience to resist. Finally, he, um, I missed that part, yeah. He will, make, he will hear the people in Jannah. He will hear the people in Jannah. And so now, it gets really difficult to remain outside. Now listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, O son of Adam, what do you want? So that you will never ask me for anything else. Okay, what do you want? So that will be the last thing that you will ask for. Then Allah will offer him before he answers. Will it please you? Will it please you if I give you the world? The world and as much? Yani double. The dunya, double. This whole world. That includes Disneyland, if that people consider that entertainment, the, the beaches, the everything, the whole dunya, double. For the last person to enter Jannah, what will he say? He will say, oh my Rabb, are you making fun of me? <laughs> this, no, ma'alish, this is all sahih. Because, you know, according to our mind, I barely made it from Jahannam, right? I, I just made it, I was just about to go to Jahannam, and I've been struggling to get a tree, only a tree. A shade of a tree. Then Allah offers him the dunya and whatever is in it. In another narration, the Sahabi, when he heard this narration, corrected the other one. He said, he will, it will be said to him, ten times the dunya. Not two times. Ten times the dunya. He will say, oh my Rabb, are you making fun of me? And you are Rabbul Alameen? You are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're the Lord of the worlds and you're making fun of me? Then Ibn Mas'ud smiled. And as you smiled. And said, why do you not ask me why I'm smiling? So they said, why are you smiling? He said, because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled. And when he smiled, they asked him, oh Messenger of Allah, why are you smiling? He said, because the Rabb of the worlds will smile. Allah Azza wa Jal will smile when he is asked, are you making fun of me? And you are Rabbul Alameen? He will say, I am not making fun of you, but I am able to do whatever I will. And so that person will enter Jannah. So again, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى There's nothing like Allah. Though we don't know this smiling, how it is. We have absolutely no knowledge and we don't want to go into that either because it's none of our business. But this is hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ said, he smiled and they asked him, why you smile? He said, because Allah smiled. When the slave told them, you're making fun of me and you're Rabbil Alameen. You know? So in the hadith, in the other version in Abu Sa'id, it will say, Allah will tell him, ask for such and such. And we, when he has stated his wishes, he will ask for everything he wanted. Allah will say, you will have them and ten times more. Then he will enter his house in paradise. And his two wives from among Hur al will enter and say, Praise be to Allah who has created you for us and created us for you. To, their, to that man. He will say, no one has ever been given anything like that which I've been given. Okay, this is it. You know, this is as good as it gets. This is your yeah, brothers and sisters. The last person to enter Jannah. The last, the one who almost entered Jahannam. So what about the one who will go among the muttaqeen? What about the one who will enter among the 70,000 from the ummah, which we were dealing with this morning, who do not seek ruqya from other people, who do not do the uh, kawi, which is a form of treatment through burning when they are sick, who do not, who are not pessimists and believe in superstitions and who depend on Allah. 70,000 who enter Jannah with غير حساب ولا عذاب with no accountability, with no reckoning and no punishment 70,000 and many more are qualified even if they're not among these 70,000 to enter Jannah and get way more than the last person to enter Jannah the last 10 times the dunya so what do we want from this dunya? really what do we want from this dunya? if the last person to enter Jannah what, what do you and I have from the dunya? Percentage-wise, Akhi, from the dunya, how much do you have from this everything? What do you want from this hospital? Nothing. All we have is our clothes, maybe a car, some are fancy, some are otherwise, a house, maybe some are rich, more wealthier than others, but in terms of ratio, we own nothing of this whole globe, nothing. 
So for the last person to get 10 times the dunya, this is, this is generosity from Allah Azza wa Jal. You see, this is what has been prepared for us. This is what we were created for. This is where Adam and Eve were. They were created in Jannah. So our home is Jannah. That is our home. We need to make it back. Woe to us if we fail. Wallah, woe to us. If we fail going back home and we crash on the way. Or we go to an wrong house. Woe to us of the destruction. So who's our enemy? Shaitan. Who will strive to make you favor this dunya over the life to come. That's the ultimate reality. He will strive to trick me and you and fool us in every possible way so we will fail to enter Jannah and wind up landing in Jahannam. Either you know your enemy and you put up a fight or you are, as they say, a, you know, a, a weak person who will be knocked out by shaitan and enter Jahannam alongside with him. This is the ultimate outcome. So let's, you know, rise for the occasion. Let us understand the objective of life. When you read the Quran, when you pray, when you worship Allah, we should remember that this is what is waiting. This is what we're striving for. Because Allah deserves to be worshipped and because Allah told us to ask Him to enter Jannah. He made that the promise. He made that the reward. Sil'atullah. The merchant, the merchandise of Allah is Jannah. Wahiya ghaliya. It is expensive. But Allah had made it affordable for the believers. Can you buy Jannah? Find me the biggest millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire. Can he purchase Jannah? Not even a tree in Jannah. So Allah will give this for free for a person who was used to say Allahu Akbar, you know, in the first row. For a person who used to fast, you know, leave alone food and drink for some hours. For a person who followed the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that's it. Yani something very easy. Wallahi, it's easy. It's available. It's affordable. It's doable. Somehow, you know, if we don't understand this reality, we will not be able to act accordingly. So last but not least, Jannah was promised to particular individuals in the Quran. But I will give you only some qualifications or qualities or the criterion by which one enters Jannah. Even though there are many, even in the Salah, the Shaykh in the Salah was mentioning some uh, the, among the qualities of the inhabitants of Jannah. But I will mention some that are general, where many of the other things will automatically be, you know, organized under these two main Reasons. Number one, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. مَنْ طَغَى Surah Al-Nazi'at وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى As for he who transgresses and he favors the life of this world, then the hellfire will be their final abode. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ as for he who fears this position or the standing in front of his Lord and he prevents his soul from its whims and desires, then Jannah will be the abode. That is the ultimate thing. We must, we must suppress ourselves when it comes to desires and whims, whether they are from our own whispers or from the shaitan, we must stand against them. Because Allah made it a condition to enter Jannah. If you fear the standing in front of your Lord, meaning you will not sin freely. Because you fear Allah holding you accountable for them on the day of judgment. Secondly, if you stop yourself when you want to transgress. If every time your soul tells you to malice, violate, and you hold yourself back, then this is the quality that will permit you to Jannah bi-ibnillahi azza wa jal. The second